All right, here we go. Question number four in our college algebra homework number six in my lab math wants us to determine whether the function is one to one. And then if it is, we're going to find a formula for the inverse. So a two part question. Here I've got the function written down up here in my notes. Let's uh, examine a couple of things. First of all, remember that f of x means y. And if you notice what the format here, this is in slope intercept form. Okay, y equals, I've got m x plus b. So this is linear, and every linear function, uh, every linear function, as long as it's not a horizontal line, that means as long as it has some slope, is going to be one to one. And we can prove that down here in Desmos. If I turn this function on, you can see that that's linear. No matter how much I zoom out, that's going to be a straight line, which will pass the horizontal line test. Nowhere can I draw a horizontal line that touches more than once. And so this is definitely one to one. And then it wants to find a formula for the inverse. Notice the notation here. F, it looks like F raised to the negative one power. This is the notation for inverse. And so over here in our window where we're working stuff out, let's talk about the O'Neill te technique for inverse. So to find an inverse function, we're going to use what I call the 3S method, okay? And the three S's are substitute, switch, and solve, okay? Substitute, switch, and solve is what we're going to use to find the inverse function. And so let's look at what each one of these words mean. Taking the original function, f of x is 3x minus 7. The substitute step says that you want to substitute for f of x and replace it with y. So I'm going to substitute y in place of f of x because f of x is y. And then we're going to do a switch. Okay, so everywhere there's a y, I'm going to switch it for x. Everywhere there's an X, I'm going to switch it for Y. So that is the switch step. And then solve means solve for Y. We're now going to take this equation and we're going to solve for Y. So taking the negative 7 over, that's going to give me X plus 7 equals 3Y. Divide both sides by 3. Notice that that gets the y by itself. Once you get y by itself, then you have the inverse function. So our inverse function is x plus 7 over 3. Got that? x plus 7 over 3. So we do have an inverse, and it's going to be, as a fraction, x plus 7 over 3. And that's it, okay? But if I stop there, I would be cheating you out of some learning. So what I want to do is come over here to Desmos and verify, or at least show you how you can verify that your inverse function is correct before you check it here. So I've got g of x written as our inverse function. If I turn that on, you can see that it's also a line that intersects the other function. And then here, look at this equation, y equals x. If I turn that on, I want you to notice something. Notice that the red graph is reflected across and makes the blue graph. So we call that symmetry. So what you need to know is that a function and its inverse will always be symmetric about the line y equals x. So what does that mean? That means if you graph the line y equals x, 
and you graph the original function, which is the blue graph, if you fold that across, that's always going to make the inverse graph or the red function here. And so a function and its inverse are always going to have this kind of symmetry about the line y equals x. All right, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.